Welcome. This video is part of the Service Desk Configuration Series. So basically in your PSA, we're showing you how to set up the Service Desk module. This video is about setting up basic information. Your company, your address, your logos, your setting your default when you open up a ticket, saving you time. So that's what we're focused in on this video. I'm logged into my PSA. I'm going to use the modules up top and click on the admin module. Then I'm going to slide over to the left and I'm going to click on the My Company folder. Locations. Locations. We ship it with main office. Uh, this is basically the location of your company. You could have multiple if you have a main office and then maybe a satellite office in a different town or country. But I'm going to double click and open up this location. Uh, give it a name, headquarters, main office, set your time zone and your date, uh, your time format. Then go to the address. This is the physical address of this particular office where you stop in, where you go to work, where you ship packages. The billing contact is what will go on any invoices generated out of your PSA. If it's the same as the shipping, well, you can just go down here and hit copy. Don't forget to hit save. Any changes you're making, hit the save and get that green bar of success. You will see the, uh, as you enter your employees, you'll see the employees or users tied to this location. And then don't forget to set your working hours. I'm gonna slide over here to the company settings. Uh, make sure your business name is okay. Add LLC or INC if we forgot it. Uh, you can um, uh, set your logos. Now that's important to your support desk process. This logo, and not only does it show for you and your employees when you log in, but it shows on the client access portal as well. This logo will show on any reports and invoices. Timesheets. Make sure you set the start of your timesheet so all employees, uh, they're all on the same page. Monday, Saturday, most people start with Monday. Uh, and then you can set how many weeks they can look on, in their timesheet folder. They can look back and see their timesheets from up to two years in either direction. Now this one's important. I want to point this out. We ship it with zero. Um, if you put one hour on a ticket or, or one minute on a ticket, it'll bill for one minute. If you put 17, it'll bill for 17. Many managed service providers, IT service providers, set this to 15. So if I put three minutes on a ticket, I'll bill for 15. If I put 17 on that time entry, I'll bill for 15. So many, many do that. Uh, let's skip over projects, go to service desk. Again, we're doing some basic setup. Um, you can actually configure if you want high, medium, low, critical, you want P1, P2, you can do that. And that's in one of the future videos in the service desk how to setup. But what I'm doing here is I'm setting my defaults. So when I click a new ticket button, it'll fill in medium as the priority. It'll fill in source. It could fill in incident. So we're saving you time when you're creating tickets. Uh, don't worry if you have um, your customers sending an email down in that service desk, we'll set you how, show you how to set it up. So the default source will be email. If you have alerts coming from RMM tools, we'll show you how that uh, alert will create and the default will say monitoring. Uh, some other settings here, uh, you could put a ticket prefix. You can use one of these ticket numbers. This will be your ticket number and it will be a count for the day and then display uh, year or month or day first, whichever one you prefer. If you're invoicing out of your PSA, don't forget to come here. Uh, notes to clients will show up on every invoice. I recommend zero for billing end date. We ship it with invoice. You could put your company, uh, you know, uh, uh, IT tech invoice. If you uh, need to have value added tax, you're going to hit yes and fill these in. And I recommend uh, the defaults for now, all yes and no. Let's head over here to the left and I'm in the outbound email. You're going to want to insert your support at or help at mycompany.com. You're also going to want to put uh, your company name in the business display. Um, emails will be generated out of your PSA. When you open a ticket, it'll send your customer a thank you or we're working on it. When you close a ticket, 
um, when you assign a ticket to one of your employees. But if you want, you could actually have them route it out of your own server by setting that up here. Uh, last but not least, I recommend you set email log retention to 30 days. Every email being generated out of this PSA is tracked uh, for reference if you need to you know, grab and resend it. Custom fields. Um, you can add custom fields. We've got great forms, great account forms and contacts and tickets. But if you need to capture some additional information uh, on any one of these forms, you can add a custom field and then we've got a variety. It could be a date, it could be a free text. A data list is like this. It has multiple values and you can uh, select a pre-configured from a data list. Oh, the wonderful thing about that is any custom fields that you add and capture data, they will show in the reports module. Lists. The system comes with 35 pre-configured lists, okay? And you always have your search grid up top. Um, you can always you know, click on the column heading and sort it. So um, when you pre-create them, it's a lot easier to use them when you're on that form. So I'm clicking on service ticket notes. When I go add a note, there's a list that says, click, it was a phone call. It was an email sent, it was an email received. So take some time to go through the lists and uh, pre-configure them. So when you're working in the different modules, um, it's, you have a pre-configured list to quickly just pick from. Company news. If you want to uh, communicate uh, to your internal employees, or even, and I'm going to correct some spelling here, uh, even your customers, you can come in here, create a news article, uh, say where you want it to display, home modules, CRM, you know, your modules for internal, and even the portal. If you want this message to be displayed to all your customers on the portal, you can do so and then hit save. Um, and then when your employees log in, they'll see nice messages like this one here. Okay, almost done with the setup here. Um, holidays, you can insert the holidays that your company observes. When you add them, they will show on the home module on the My Calendar and the Dispatcher's Calendar. It's just great to uh, help with planning. Can I schedule that job? Can I schedule that on-site? No, we have a holiday. Administrative work. When you enter time on a ticket, it automatically updates the timesheet of that employee. If you need to have the employee track some other time, like staff meeting, research or paperwork, you simply hit add, add it here, and then this will be available on their timesheet. And I would set this to non-billable. These type of work, uh, tasks, excuse me, admin tasks, are internal. They're not customer facing. You need to do something with a customer, track it on a ticket or a, a project. Okay, last folder here in the setup is called authentication. If you are using um, the uh, uh, Auth Anvil product, uh, two-factor authentication, 2FA, two, two and single sign-on. Here's where you would insert your credentials uh, so you can take advantage of those wonderful features. Okay, that is the My Company setup. Other videos are to show you in the HR how to quickly add your departments, job titles, and then enter your employees that you're assigning tickets to. There's a video that talks about getting your accounts, your customers, into the CRM. We need to so we can open up tickets and support them.